Let's take a look at how the temperature boundary condition gets incorporated into the framework that we have been discussing. And the temperature boundary condition is called an essential boundary condition, and I'll indicate why. This is in contrast to the flux, which is, as we saw, a quote-unquote natural boundary condition. So we have our four nodes arranged along a line, and I've shown it within the context of the bar. And this is the assumed shape for our temperature. And we have four algebraic equations here relating temperatures um, at neighboring nodes. And I've brought the equation at the, the first node onto the right-hand side. The reason I did that is because it involves this term, the gradient um, at the left boundary, and that's the heat flux at the left boundary. And that's not known. Um, so it, this equation involves um, an unknown on the right-hand side. So I've set it aside. On the other hand, at the left boundary, we know the temperature from the temperature boundary condition. Okay, So now I bring in the additional equation from uh, at node 1 from that temperature boundary condition. The shape that we have assumed has to essentially satisfy that, you know, that equation. That is, this value of the nodal temperature has to be T0. It's essential for it. Um, which is why this is known as an essential boundary condition. Okay, that's the the terminology, and contrast it to the the flux boundary condition here, which uh, you know you can't say that the shape has to essentially satisfy that. In fact, we'll see that the shape won't satisfy that uh, the natural or the flux boundary condition. So the solution proceeds in three stages. So in the first stage, what you do, so this is the first stage. You look at all the nodes that are at, that have essential boundary conditions on them, and you, you know, you just assign the corresponding temperature value. So for here, the, you know, the solver would look at this node and say, hey, you know, there's an essential boundary condition on that node, and that value of temperature has to be T0, and so you know that value. Now you have, now you come to these three equations. This is known, but this is unknown, this is unknown, this is unknown. So you have now these three nodal temperatures that are unknown, but you have three equations. So you have three equations and three unknowns, and so you s solve them together by inverting that subset of the stiffness matrix, and that's step two. In this case, that would involve inverting a three by three matrix. Now people are doing ridiculously large problems, you know, 100 million unknowns. So you're inverting 100 million by 100 million stiffness matrix uh, for very complicated problems. And if you do it cleverly and you have very fast computers, you can do that with, with today's computers. And then after stage two, I know all my nodal temperatures, okay? So all the nodal temperatures have been determined, and I basically know my temperature distribution. Then what do I do with this, this equation here? It turns out it, it, you can do something very important. So in the third stage, you can come to this equation and say, hey, you know, now I know T1, and I know T2, and this is, you know, a, a known quantity, so I can determine the flux at the left boundary. And if I take Q1 and multiply it by the area, that's the amount of heat flow leaving the, you know, or entering through the left boundary. And I can do my, um, I can do a check on the solution, whether the solution satisfies the um, heat balance or energy balance. So I can check that the the heat heat flow coming in that's um, this over here plus the heat generated which I know uh, that's Q times the volume is equal to the heat going out which I know from the boundary condition 
So this entity turns out is, is you know, is very important to check the energy balance and it's called a reaction in ANSYS. And you can ask, you know, you can request what the reaction is from ANSYS and then do a check on the energy balance and you'll be doing that. It's called a reaction because it comes, you know, that terminology comes from structural mechanics where this, this entity would be uh, the force at the essential boundary. So if you're specific, you know, if you're fixing the displacement, you're fixing the left boundary, then this reaction would give you the force that's required to hold that boundary there, or that's a reaction. And this three-step process is very general, and you know, for any any finite element solver is going to use this three-step process. Step one and step two are necessary. And step three is highly recommended to check on, you know, whether your your equa your solution satisfies fundamental physical principles such as energy conservation or equilibrium.